Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Another. Who was here last Wednesday? Oh, wow. So, okay, for those who were not here, today we're doing part two of, of SWAP. And you will know what we call a swap. It's, it's just transitioning from glory to glory, from faith to faith, because that's what God has called us to do. So if you didn't see part one, you have to go watch it on, on our YouTube, because today we're going on part two. So we're going to get deeper. Um, so let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for this amazing day. Thank you, Lord, that we have the freedom to say, Jesus, we have the freedom to gather together and to worship you, knowing that you inhabit the praises of your people. So we welcome you, Lord, and we ask you that you will work in our hearts, that we will be able to see through the eyes of faith. We'll be able to see beyond our moment. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So I'm just going to give you a scripture uh, already while I talk. Go to Galatians 2.20. But I believe, as we started last week, I believe that this is a year of growth. This is a year of growth. Uh, uh, this is a year of great harvest. I believe that we will see a great ha harvest happening, not only in this church, but in the body of Christ. And uh, when you hear a word like that, I, I love to talk about growth. I, talk, I love to talk about harvest. But if you notice those two words, ugh, I mean, I like the idea, but I don't like the idea of getting dirty. Right? Because growth means you're going to deal with dirt, right? And harvest, then I'm going to get on my knees and I have to pick the fruit. And so it, it, it does with a lot of process and a lot of work. But I believe that God said tonight as we were worshiping, he says, if you trust me, if you just choose to trust me, but trust him beyond like how we trust him in, in 2018. I trusted God in some things. I'm not going to say in everything, right? Because let, let's be honest. But he said, but if you trust me in all things, if you choose to believe who you are now in me, there will be great things that will take place this year. There will be great miracles. There will be great uh, signs and wonders. And maybe you're sitting here tonight and you're like, well, it's already, today's the what, the 21st? Thank you, nobody's helping. Yeah, 23rd. The 23rd, you see, I'm two days behind. But we're already on the 23rd, and I don't know about you. I don't know how you feel, if you feel that you're already advancing, right? Especially those who started the fast. You know, some, some people, I was talking to um, uh, some people, and they said, you know, I'm already on the second day, and instead of losing weight, they, got, they gained two, two pounds. <laughs> well, I said, maybe you needed that, right? Because we need to see everything from a different perspective. Um, so as we're fasting and praying, I, I really believe that God is going to give you a word tonight, that you're going to know who he is how much God loves us and how he is always, always with us, no matter what season we're in life. So are you there already in Galatians? Okay, it says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live it by faith. In the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. It says that we have been crucified with Christ, right? It says that it is no longer I who live. So do you live, do you get to live now your life or who lives in you? Jesus. It says, in the life that which I now live in the flesh, in this body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So as I was thinking, I'm like, you know how we're talking about, last week we were talking about, and we're still talking about um, heart makeup. So, and remember, if you were here, you have to oh, go watch the, the, the video, but remember, I didn't buy uh, heart makeups because I didn't want to kill them. So I just got the shelves. So you get the idea. And look how beautiful this one looks, right? So it's, it's different sizes. Look it. My own art, right? If not, you pay more. But I'm going to show you something. Oh, they're all beautiful. They're all beautiful. Support eight kids global. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting paid for that. I'm just kidding. Um, so, okay, so this is the way I see it. 
because we're going to use the hermit crabs. It says that I've been crucified with Christ, so I'm no longer. So this was my old nature. Okay, I mean, this is, they were both cute, but pretend this is your old nature, right? This is your old nature, and then God has upgraded us because he's in the business of upgrading us, not updating us. He upgraded us. And so he said, okay, so now you used to be here. You used to live in the kingdom of darkness. You used to be part of the kingdom of darkness, and I'm just going to swap you. There's nothing to do with you and I or what we do is only in our belief in God. Because it says, if you only confess that I am the Lord and you confess it with your mouth and you believe it with my heart, that's the moment we, we were transferred, we were swapped into, from this kingdom of darkness into this kingdom of light. The problem, there is a problem, is that when we're swapping, I'm no longer, this is my old shell, right? He says, get rid of that, the old nature. The old nature is no longer yours. I'm giving you a new DNA, and that DNA, it comes from the kingdom of heaven, and I want you to swap. I want you to be bold, and I want you to go in. And so for me, I used to think, like, if I give my life to, to, to Christ today, I swap my life, I believe with my heart, I confess with my mouth, and Tomorrow, I better be a different woman. Tomorrow, I better be witnessing already to Jesus, about Jesus. The following day, I better be already graduating, you know, a master's in divinity or something. I used to think that it should be that way, that it should be fast. And, and God moves fast because he's a God that, who, who wants to do great things. But I'm not talking about that kind of fast. I'm talking about the kind that you make a choice and you have to say, I choose to grow out of my comfort. This year, if we wanna see great things, we need to choose to grow out of our comfort. What's your comfort? I don't know what's your comfort. Maybe you don't like to talk to people. You know, maybe um, you, God has asked you to, to start a new business. Uh, maybe God has called you and given you a, 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 a great dream and then you see it and it's impossible because you see yourself through the old nature. You see yourself through your old self. And what it means, this is what it means when we become a new nature from the old nature to the, from the old nature to the new nature, what it means is like, now I am renewed. I am literally born again, going to heaven. I might be living like hell, but I'm going to heaven. But what it means is I just need to get rid of all the old habits. We, we come with habits, right? Like we come with patterns, we come with cycles. And sometimes we repeat those cycles over and over and we figure where is God in this? Because I'm repeating the same cycle that my parents live and my parents' parents live that way. And so what, where, where, why is not, that cycle not breaking? And it's not that God is not doing his job because he already did it on the cross, because he already crucified himself for you so we don't live. Remember last Wednesday I was saying to God, crucify me again when he asked me to do something that's really hard. He never said, I'm gonna crucify you again. He said, we did it together. He called us to pick up our cross, which is different than crucify yourself every day. We need to die to those places that has become, and we become, and I believe that that's the reason we don't go into a new shop, is because it's so familiar, it's so comfortable. We love, I don't know about you, but I love to be comfortable. You know, I even like if I'm home and it's cold, I like my temperature at a certain number, a certain degree. If it goes a degree up, I'm not comfortable. My husband likes t the temperature a certain degree. We don't agree with his degree. <laughs> but that's his comfort. He wants it like super hot or super freezing. I don't want to be in between. And then the kids want the windows open. So, and that's the way it is. That's the body of Christ. We're all indifferent. Like, uh, what's your comfort? Because sometimes my comfort zone is not going to be like your comfort zone. And I think many times that's what we get very confused and we get to look, I'm here. I hope you guys can see it. No, really? Oh. And, ah, it's because this is uncomfortable. Okay. See, when we're here and we look, look at other people, I look at this one. I don't want to jump on the other one. 
I, I, that's, that's too ugly, you know? I'm comparing myself. And sometimes we don't come out of our old self because I'm comparing myself. I don't want to go into this one. And I don't want to go into this one either. It doesn't look too pretty. But this one, you see, even has flowers. It has a heart. It's not even beating, but you know. And then from here, I look at this person and, and see it as your outer shelf, as your life. And then you look at somebody here, but you don't know how this person got here. But I tell you how they got here. They were vulnerable because remember when we saw the video, you have to be, they're so afraid to get out of their shell because in the meantime, while you're, t you're getting out of one shell into, the, into another, just the sun will kill you. And, and did you see the video that they were also cute lining? They all lined up in order to swap shells. And many times we in church, we're together. Yeah, well, I'm going to say it in, uh, I was talking this to our break girls. We're, we're um, in, in Spanish it's called juntos pero no revueltos. That would be that translation, you're good. Yeah, like you're together. You could be in a table. We could be eating dinner. We could be smiling. We're together. We look like they're together, but but we're not. We're not involved in each other's lives. I live for myself. I eat what I want. You could be in a you could be in a dining table with the family, and now which is sad, and I don't have myself. Like we're all eating, but we're all on our phones. You need the salt? Please pass me the salt. <laughs> That's why we forget even how to speak. No, and, and it's, it's funny, but it's so true. And you know that it was saying that how the, if you read the word where the Bible says, but seek first the kingdom of God in his righteousness and everything else shall be added unto you. It's in Matthew 6.33. Do you know that word seek means to crave? Like this craving. He already put all these things, all these receptors in our own brain to crave them in our soul, in our mind. We have been set up. We already wired for it. We're just not activated. But social media is doing such a good job. He already activated our cravings. I mean, you could read it. I, I read an entire book in one night because I couldn't sleep. So you should read a book. I read a book that they put, they call it, they put cues, they put triggers. And what they do is that they won't let you, uh, from people, you know, because you feel great, right? If you post something and you only have two likes, you're like, mm. <laughs> Like, I remember one time crying, no, I'm just kidding. I, I, I posted something, like if you don't post nothing interesting, like a picture, it has to be like a selfie or like, look what I'm eating, then people like it, right? But if you just, you know, that day I just woke up and I, you know, I was being very godly that morning. And so I put a scripture. I said, I said see how many scriptures I'm going to get. Right? Because it was a good scripture. It was, but seek first the kingdom of God. I think that's what it was. And then I checked my Facebook within like an hour, one like. I was like, I have more than a thousand friends. I'm looking at that shell. This show is not even real. They're posting things and they're not even real. And they're so comfortable. But I'm not saying, it, I mean, social media is awesome. But what I'm saying, what I read is that they have uh, designed it in a way that every 20 minutes, depending how often you're on social media, depending, so they tailor it for you. So you become so like, it's your comfort. Every 10 minutes, they said now even at work, people are working 10 minutes and then they have to check their social media and it's already became a pattern it's already a craving so they're craving the likes they're craving a life that might not exist they're craving something that is not real and i believe that that's what the hope in the world and the hope in the church we lost because we're like how is it that they're happier look at that woman she shares a whole devotional I sit there and I say one day I'm gonna do a devotional this morning just like so and so see that's comparing right I saw a shell that was prettier than mine I was like well I'm a pastor maybe I should do a little like you know let it be a more than a sentence right let's see if I can do uh, a devotional I don't even know how to do devotionals 
in a sense, to write them down. I know how to sit with God and be under his feet. But what I'm talking about is like we are craving. There's, there's something that we need to do. And that's the enemy using what God has already created in us. Because we are supposed to crave, but we're supposed to crave them. Have you ever craved something that you went crazy and you went to get it and it was 3 in the morning? Not me, only when I was pregnant. But we crave, believe me, if, you, if right now there's a lot of people fasting, and, and, and I heard some people, I'm fasting uh, social media. Not me, but I'm saying some people are saying that, right? <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. Um, but I try not to go on it. Because then I'm saying, I'm creating that habit. It's becoming my pattern. I have to check every 10 minutes. Let's see who is doing whatever. Who, who is, where are they, what are they eating? What restaurant they're going? Where is the vacation? Like, and then you feel, like you, you feel like you're together because now we have all these friends, right? And they even congratulate you. We, we do have friends and all that. But what I'm saying, my point that I'm repeating is the craving part. Because the craving, God already put it in us, and that craving is to go from glory to glory and from faith to faith. And so God wants to encourage you that you need to be vulnerable. I believe that we are the, you know, we always say, you know, I always say it out of my mouth, uh, the church and Jesus is, is the answer, Right? I was like, and I was writing down the message. was like, and every question that I have, was like, but you're the answer, Jesus. I was answering to my, myself, like, you're the answer. You're the, you're the, ans the answer for cancer. You're the answer for dysfunctionality. You're the answer. You name it, you're the answer. And then he says, then why you question all the time then? If he's the answer, why is it that we question him all the time, or most of the time? Because life is hard. Life is hard, and no one wants to tell you how they got here. This is us or me being a pastor. I wish someone would have told me how they got here. And probably would have said, no, I stay in my old shell. <laughs> but God won't, won't give you the whole details. But, it, but it's beautiful when people are able to share, you know what? I've been where you are. Yeah. I've been there. Yeah. You know, my family is messed up. It's okay because, you know what? I've been there. And I wasn't, I wasn't by myself. I was with God because now I live in him and he lives through me and I have the Holy Spirit. So no matter in your darkest moments, in your most ugliest moments, he is always, always, always with us. Yeah. And that I know. That I know and no one can take that away from me. Like I know that my God is real. And what I found out that is, is in every situation, in every problem, in every trial, you know what I found out? I understood. I got to know even God better. Like when I yielded myself, right? Because at the beginning, we start with all these questions. And, but why, Lord? Why? But then when you stop asking the why and you just go for him because you believe that you go back again that he is the answer. Okay, Lord, you are the answer. And then I'm just going to surrender and I'm just going to trust you. Then you, he's going to reveal himself to you. So you get to, to discover him and you get to recover a part of yourself that you didn't even know Amen. you had. You get, you get to recover a broken part that maybe that's what he was trying to teach you. Because God it will never teach us to hurt us. God will always teach us to make us better. We go from good to great. But it's hard for, to go from good to great. It's hard to make uh, the, first, the first step. You know what? You, you can start today. You can start tonight. You can say, you know what? I'm going to start tonight. I'm going to believe what God has said. And as I said, we came into the kingdom already. Once you said yes to Jesus, you know what? Your sins are forgiven. And it's hard to believe that. I mean, like all of them, yes. He made provision for all of your sins because he knew you before the foundation of the earth. He is never shocked where we are in life. We are always, right, shocked. Like, what the hell happened? Hell happened. Life happened, but he was never shocked. He never, he, he saw it because he's your alpha and he's your omega. And that means that, you know what, he is in my in-between. Yeah. So he's not afraid. 
wherever you are in life, today you can get it right and decide, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into my new, I'm leaving this shell, this, this old self of mine, and I'm going to get into a new place. And maybe you can start with one step, one step. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to believe God for, for a family member. Or maybe you're going to believe God to invite someone to church because you're shy. Or maybe I'm going to believe God then start believing. I used to make fun of this, but okay, believe for a parking spot. Go into that little shell, right? Like we, we sometimes I used to think it's so funny, but that's the way I started. Like God gave me a parking spot, right? He gave it to me. You know why? Because I believed I wasn't just talking. I really believe that he will give me a parking spot. And so you're exercising faith. You're exercising. You're, you're, you're getting stronger. And it sounds stupid sometimes, like, please, believe for a million dollars. If you can't believe for $10, you're not going to believe for a million dollars. If you can believe that he's going to pay your bill, how are we going to believe for a building? Right, so we need to go from little glory to glory to glory, and it's uncomfortable. I'm gonna tell you the process is disgusting. That's what I call it. You can call it whatever. It's it's just muddy. It's messy. So get out of the old shell. Go to uh, Psalms 20, 73, 26. And I believe that God can break our vicious cycles. And a friend of mine said this, which I just heard it, but I'm going to take it. I'm going to give it credit once, but then after that, it's mine. <laughs> she said, she was just talking. I translated because it, it was in Spanish. And she said, you know, we go from our, we have our vicious cycles. And until we surrender to Jesus, that's when we have a virtuous cycle. A virtuous woman, a virtuous man. What is a virtuous person? It's someone who believes, someone who knows who they are. So you know what? Let us believe this year that we are cutting down those cycles. Get off the wheel. Those vicious cycles need to stop. Whatever that viciousness, because it comes from the enemy to torment you, to tell you that he, you know how I said that you're a new nature? Oh, I am a new nature. It has nothing to do with me. Believe me, or else I wouldn't be. But it has to do all with him. Psalms, uh, you in Psalms? Yes. Psalms seventy-three twenty-six. It says, "My flesh and my heart fail, but God is the strength of my heart, in the portion in my portion forever." I, you know what the uh, the heart means right there? It means the mind. Some uh, uh, some translation says the mind. Another one says the seed of all feelings. So it says that when your flesh, maybe you're sick in body and it's failing you, you, you don't know. They're like, I, I don't know what to do. Like, the doctor gave me this diagnosis and, and I don't know what to do. My own body is failing me. Or maybe it is your heart, your mind, your emotions, your feeling. You, you, you don't know what's up, what's down. You don't know if you're going to be good today or tomorrow. It says that even when that fails you, our God will never fail you. It says that, but God is the strength of what? Oh, my feelings. He's the strength of my emotions. He wants my emotions to actually align with faith. One day, as, as the more, as we do our swapping and getting stronger and stronger, one day our feelings are just going to align with faith. Because God doesn't, it doesn't matter. We say forget feelings, but he loves it when we have feelings. Isn't it awesome when you feel, you say, I believe God, but then you feel it, Right? Because you can say, I believe God, and we're like stoic, like, I believe God, I believe God. <laughs> He's my restorer. I mean, which is good, and you know what? He doesn't mind. But he wants us all in alignment. He wants us to know, to feel, to taste his goodness, to see his goodness. He uses all of our senses. So he is the strength of your heart and your portion forever. Do you know what forever means? Don't, please don't, not everyone at the same time. How do you think forever happens? This is what I think. I used to think, but I don't think that anymore. I used to think, um, 
you know, you said, uh, you know, you meet somebody or you tell your husband, I will love you forever, right? And he looks beautiful, like, oh, I love my kids forever. Oh. And, I, and I picture something like a rainbow, whatever you want. You know, you, you picture your own thing. You know, if you're a man, picture horses or whatever. But forever, like a Mustang, I don't know. But like me, it's like a pony and beautiful thing, forever. But, I, but, I'm, but I'm seeing a picture further, way over there, like forever. I will love Jesus forever, and I will love my church forever. And people say, say to me, I will stay with you forever, and now they're not here. <laughs> I will tell you why. And actually God told me this, but I just discovered it today, so I'm going to take it too. Forever is composed of nows. You want to stay together forever in your marriage? Change now. Love now. Forgive now. Encourage now. You want to believe for your children? Love them now. Oh, no, but you don't know where they are. Mm. I raised them in Jesus. They knew the Bible. They recited the 66 books of the Bible. And now they don't get in, even remember. They'll even say Malachi instead of Malachi. <laughs> but I thought that they were going to serve, and I prayed to God that it was going to be forever. You see, because we don't even understand, because we're not living through Jesus. When I thought about, my gosh, that, that puts it on me, because I, I, I want things forever, I want a legacy. I live a legacy and, li and also leave a legacy. And I want it forever. That the rules will be known to change life, that the rules will be known to know each other, to love each other, to have a, a strong marriage, a strong family, strong children, just strong. And you want that forever. Okay, so but what are you doing now? Because by now you're building your forever. And I think many times, that's when marriages fail, right? Because all of a sudden you woke up and then you look at the person and the person looks at you and you're like, not forever. <laughs> and then you have questions. How did this happen? It happened in your nows. It's always the little foxes that spoil the vine. It's always the little leaven that leavens the lump. But we focus on the huge things, right? Like, I'm like, so it, it, it sobered me up because the Lord told me that, that, that next weekend, I read it today, I just happened to read it. Emily Dickinson said that forevers are composed of now. See, the problem is that when we're ready to swap, when you make your decision, I'm gonna swap, I, that's it. Maybe some of you last Wednesday, they said, I'm swapping, I am moving forward, right? And I'm doing it. And then you got out of church and you felt like a little bit stronger, right? Because we, we're together and then we're, it helps us when we are together. But then you went home and reality just punched you. Right? Problems, maybe finances. Maybe you got a bill that wasn't, you were not expecting. Maybe your child got sick and who knows. And then you got there and then you start you start with the questioning, and you said, well, maybe, it, maybe, maybe my decision that I'm about to, I'm going to choose to forgive, or I'm going to choose to give my best, I'm going to choose to believe, I'm going to choose to go pray for that person, I'm going to choose to do something amazing for God, but what about if this is the biggest mistake? What about if I make this swap, if I, if I choose to grow in God this year, maybe it's, it, I'm going to get hurt again and I'm not willing to get hurt again. That only happened to me once, but I'm not gonna allow it. And those are thoughts that go in our mind. I know the Bible says that God is able to uh, be with me, and He's able, and He is made, has made us capable to swap, to grow. He is he's able and He's capable. But the process from one shell to another can be scary, as I said. So I would say to you, get rid of your old shell, your old nature. Crush it. 
I was talking to our women, and I invite you for those that were having Brave uh, this Saturday. If one of our beautiful women said, you know what? I refuse to repeat 2018. You know what that means? It means I refuse to stay in the same place, and I'm going for my next show. I, I'm going for my next level in pain, but I'm going to the next level. Screaming, but I'm going through the next level. I am going to go and I'm going in the shell. Don't die in your old self. Can you imagine you get to heaven and we're supposed to hear, well done, good and faithful servant, but then we're going to hear, well, well, you're done. Because it was too hard because we couldn't make a choice. The word of God that says that we should live by faith and not by sight. But are we really living by faith? As I said last Wednesday, and I'm going to repeat it again because I believe that it's worth repeating. We say, uh, today is faith, which is, today is faith. Tomorrow, you're not there yet, so we can call it faith, right? But sometimes you start your morning, and maybe your morning wasn't the best. And now we feel like, you know, we already fell. We already let down God. No, God says, now is the moment. Now, faith. Now, now, right now. Not uh, 30 minutes ago. Right now is your choice. We hear a great message perhaps on a Sunday. I don't know if that ever happens to, to you, but it has happened to me. I have heard a great message on a Sunday. Or maybe I've been driving in a car on a Sunday. And I hear a great message. I love to hear TDJs, and I feel like, yes. I, and if I could, I would have a hanky like that, you know, just because he inspires me. He, he's a man of God, and I just love to hear him, right? And I'm like, yes, yes, and yes, and yes, I am moving. On a Sunday, I always choose, oh, on a Sunday, yes, Lord. Monday, I don't know what happened Monday. As the week goes by, then... I question like, but, what, but whatever happened? And I'm gonna tell you that in this life, maybe this year you're gonna encounter many trials and many tribulations. And you're gonna say, so what happens to, to the Bible where it says Romans, I think it's in Romans, if they, you guys put my, my scripture, and then close in with this. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Do you know how many times, I love the scripture, but do you know how many times I have questioned that scripture? Have you ever questioned that scripture? Maybe you don't tell anyone, but I'm telling you, I'm getting out of my shell and entering another one. That's how vulnerable, like, I don't know how this is going to help me. Maybe it's gonna help that person, but it has nothing to do with me because God is not even answering my prayers because I'm looking at another shell and I, God, I, I saw that God answered their prayer. How come he's not answering to me? And then all this doubt comes and all these things come. And then there's times that you don't even feel God. You come to church and you're, you, everybody is, it, is so in tune with God and the presence of God is here. But we are so overwhelmed. We're so disappointed. We're so hurt that I don't even feel the presence of God. Where are you, Lord? And you're like, where are you? You left me. That's a lie from the pit of hell. And I'm going to tell you that God loves you as you are just the way you are, just the way you are. You, you might say, you don't even know me. You don't know what I've done. You don't know what I said. You, he loves you just the way you are. The problem is that you don't love yourself just the way you are. And until we start loving ourselves, even in our mess, that's where we're going to see miracles. That's where we're going to get stronger. That's so good. You know, uh, yeah, please. That's really good. I, I love this message on swap and, and I love the whole analogy and I know if, if you're thinking man that's such a practical illustration it's actually biblical because God remind us, reminded us through his son Jesus he said you know what I'm trying to bring new wine mm -hmm. but I can't put my new wine in old wine skins that's good. Yes. It, you, you, you can and, and I really believe there's an urgency right now for the church, the body of Christ, to, to really wake up. And, and please, um, don't take this in a harsh way. Don't, uh, 
don't think that there's any uh, criticism. Um, but this is, I think the church is the safest place to receive critique because when, when we are able to critique our own life or you have a message like the word of God that begins to critique and confront your ideology or even just your, your life and your conviction, there should be a change. Conviction brings change. And um, I love the fact that many of us think that change just happens because I'm going to go work out and we do all the practical, physical things, which is great. But many times I think that the reason we don't grow, the only way to grow is by faith. Yeah. And the just shall live by faith. So no faith. The only way to please God is by faith. There's no other way. So I think many times we lack faith because we think living by faith is denying our reality. But the truth is walking by faith is facing your reality. You can face reality. Whatever reality you live in right now, you can face it by faith. And the, the person I want to quickly just give as an example, illustration, because we can call it swap. And I know that my wife said, you know what, God wants to bring us into a place of transition. But have you, have you noticed that transitions are not always the easiest? They're challenging. If you've ever transitioned out of a group of relationships, was that easy? No. When you broke up with a boyfriend or a girlfriend, was that transition easy? Heck no. When, when us as parents, when my daughter graduated from junior high to high school, I, was a, I cried each time. When she went to college, I really cried. She was for like six months crying on her bed. I'm like, she's just in the Zusa. Chill out. You know? <laughs> Relax. I didn't want to let go of my show. Yeah. But, but I think the person that would know <laughs> so much about transition would be Joseph. Think about this. Joseph had a coat of many colors. He had the favor of his father. Do you realize that when you, when you receive Christ, God clothed you with righteousness? That means that the favor of God's on you. Yes. But let me tell you something. Favor will never come without opposition. Do you realize that when you came to Christ, you have the blessings of God? Well, let me tell you something. The blessings of God do not come without opposition. And so many times we refuse to move from shell to shell, from glory to glory, from mountaintop to mountaintop, because you have to come off your peak back into the valley where it's difficult because you got to climb back up. That's a challenge. And so as, as we're in 20. 19, uh, I challenge you, if you really want to make a change, you're going to have to face your reality. The reality of your attitude about God or even just life, your perception about life. You have to face your reality of your family, your marriage, your children. Face it. But don't face it with an attitude of like, oh, God. Listen, as as you read the story of Joseph, and I'm not here to preach any of that, but as you read the story of Joseph, please listen to this. And this ties into what my wife said. She said, you know what? God's not, he's not going to leave you, right? Isn't that what she said? Okay, well, let me back it up with scripture. You read Genesis chapter 36, 30, 37, 33. You start seeing that when Joseph, he gets the coat of many colors. And you would think like, yes, I'm favored. God gives him a dream, right? Here, maybe some of you are here right now. Some of you may be here right now. Maybe some of you are here right now. God showed him this. And his interpretation was, I got this now. Praise God. I got the favor of God. I got the blessing of God. I got the breakthrough of God. Man, I got, I got God. I'm going to church now. Well, get, listen, get ready because with all that favor, with all that blessing, with all that divine purpose is going to come opposition. The moment you decide I'm going to fast and pray, oh, let me tell you something. King's stomach comes into play. We have to dethrone King's stomach. We have to. The reason most people will fast social media, not, not everyone, but most people will fast social media because they refuse to dethrone King's stomach. It's, it's just com- a different, it's it's just comfortable. A different craving. It's a different, it's comfortable. <laughs> it's comfortable. You know, for me, social media would probably be an easy thing, but, but food is not. I like food. But check this out. So Joseph, he's clothed, he's got promise, he's got purpose. But guess what? 
moment he got that, 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 that coat of many colors, first thing that happens, he gets sold to slavery. After he gets sold to slavery, now he's in the palace and he's being accused of rape. He goes through that, now he's in prison. Now he, but, but notice, but throughout it all, think about this. The favor of God was on him because everywhere he went, though it was a challenge, though it was an obstacle, everywhere he went, when he, when he got sold to slavery, he found favor with Potiphar. Man, he took him and I, come here, man, you're going to work with me. I like, what, I like how you work. I like, I like your, your etiquette. I like, I like how you, how you dream. I love your, 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 your drive. I love your passion. And he just favored him. And, and if you read in Genesis, I believe it's 36, it says, and the Lord was with Joseph. Because when you're in the mess, when you're in the middle of that, ah, whatever it is you're facing, that dirt, that challenge, that transition, let me tell you something, the Lord is with you. How the Lord was with Joseph, the Lord is with you. Abraham's transition was not easy either, even from Abram to Abraham. It was not easy. It, and, and each man had to face his or her reality by faith. And the just shall live by faith. We have to come back to faith, guys. You can't transition just by reading a leadership book. You can't transition by, you know, uh, reading spiritual books. You can't transition by listening to T.D. Jakes or Mauricio Ruiz or anybody. The only way you can transition is when you face you. You face you with God, and you will transition into promise. And that's what God wants for us. That's why we're on this 10-day fast. We've been here now. This was day three, 6 a.m. prayer, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. It's been amazing. And, uh, of course, you know, you would want everybody to be involved, but that's okay. But the ones that are here that are praying, let me tell you something. We're, we're blessing your life. We're praying for your children. We're praying for your marriages. We're praying for your family. We're praying for your work. We're praying for the favor, the blessing of God. We're covering you. I encourage you, if you're not in this fast now, get in it. Fast and pray. You already have all the information. Go to our church app. Get, get all the information. And, and let's transition. Amen. It's time to swap. You know, we're always swiping. It's time to swap. Let's swap. Let's swap from one season to another season. Amen. Come on, I want to, don't, don't some of you want to, can you imagine if you just gave all of your life to God, like 100%, you were sold out for, I wonder what your life would look like in one year from now. I just wonder, I wonder where you would be spiritually. I wonder where you would be emotionally. I wonder where you would be relationally. I wonder where you would be financially. That's, I, 22 years of walking with God, the only way I've been able to transition for 22 years by faith no there's been no other way it's by faith if today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today